So today I want to talk about Garmin's trading status and training load. I want to do a little review of it, just go over it, um, talk about what it is, and I want to compare it to some other pieces of software out there. I'm going to compare it to Golden Cheetah, Strava, and I'm going to use TSS with HRV for training to compare it to see how it compares to all these different pieces of software. Just talk about what I think about it in general, because I've been using it for a few years now. Um, there are some things I like and dislike about it. So let's talk about it. Let's get in, start there. So what you see up on the screen, you see my training status so this is what you see inside Garmin connect which is the web version the web version just shows a little bit more you can see this data on your watch and you can see this data on the app but each thing like the app shows a little more than the watch and the Garmin connect shows a little more than everything else on the web so I'm just in the web for now um, now this works on watches like Garmin's higher-end forerunner Phoenix series those kind of watches this works on it doesn't work like I have a vivo smart smart four that I use for sleep you can't see this stuff on the vivo smart four it doesn't calculate this so you have to have certain watches from Garmin's lineup to get this all right so let's dig in all right so right now what we see is we see my training status I see a status I see vo2 max and I see seven day training load so let's start at the top I see a bunch of colors up on the screen and I see some words like when I scroll over it you can see like in the upper right like it changes based on the color like this blue says recovery and this lime says maintaining what do those numbers mean in Garmin connect you can click learn more it tells you what those numbers mean so let's just take a quick look quick little peek so first of all all these calculations and data is done by using first beats metrics um, so let's see what my status is. So first of all, when you first get your watch, you get a no status message. In order to get a training status, you need to run or bike several times. Now you need to run outside using GPS and heart rate. If you have, if you run on a treadmill, it's not going to count. Um, biking, you have to bike with a power meter. If you're not using a power meter, it's not going to do it. So in order for you to get your training status, you got to either run or bike or do both um, several times. I think it's two times to get it. Um, but you have to do it several times and it'll start to calculate your training status. Now, obviously to get to become more accurate, you're going to want to do your training status for a few weeks to like a month, a good six to eight weeks before it gets more accurate. Cause it needs data to base off of what you're doing to figure out like if you're doing good or bad to, you know, it needs that base baseline. And that's what everything needs. Everything you're using to calculate your data needs data. The more data you have, the closer you get to what it really is basically. All right. So we've got several statuses here. We've got detraining, which means you've been training much less than usual for a week or more. You're affecting your fitness. So your fitness is going down. All right. Unproductive. Your training load is at a good level, but your fitness is decreasing. Again, you're going down. Fitness is going down. Decrease. All right. Recovery. Your lighter training load is allowing your body to recover. It's essential for extended periods of hard training. You can return to a higher level of training load when you feel ready. Okay, maintaining. Basically, you're maintaining your fitness level. To see improvement, they suggest you add more variety to your workouts to increase the training volume. Productive, yeah, man, keep up the good work. You're improving your fitness. Peaking, oh, you're ready to race. You're, you're ready to just go right now. Overreaching, you're overtraining. You're doing too much for your body. Okay, so that's what these mean. Now that we have an idea of what these mean, let's take a look at my stuff and my data. And let me talk a little bit about it. Okay, so what we've got. First thing we have. Looks like I was peaking a little bit. I was productive, then maintaining, then in the recovery. So it looked like I peaked here and then started to go down. And it looked like I was down from like May 4th where I was, you know, maintaining all the way. This is unproductive, unproductive. So from May 4th to May 17, I was unproductive. Then it looks like I was productive. Then I was just, then for like the last 10 days, I've been just going down again. Basically I'm maintaining, now I'm in recovery, maintaining recovery, probably gonna say unproductive, 
tomorrow. Like it's, you know, I peaked a little bit here, but now we're going down again. So basically, what does what does this paint a picture of for the next month? Let's take a look at VO2 max and seven day training load just to get a little more information. All right, so based on my VO2 max here, looks like my VO2 max basically said stayed between 45 and 46 for the entire month. So it looked like it went up and down one point here and there. So my training load looked like it went down here and there from 45 to 46, which Garmin says is good because they, they interpret your VO2 max. They say mine's good. So it stayed, it's VO2 max stayed the same. Okay. Let's look at my seven day training load. Looks like it started out okay. Then it went down, decrease. Then it looked like it went up a little bit. Looked like it was gonna maybe start going up, but then it's over the last like 10 days, it's slowly decreased again. So basically, and it looks like where I'm ending up today, it looks like my training load has basically stayed pretty steady, very similar to my VO2 max, stayed pretty steady for the whole entire month. Um, hasn't increased or decreased, went up and down just slightly here and there. And if you look at my month, I mean, it looks like at the end here, I'm basically maintaining my fitness. Um, so that's what Garmin has told me. So if I'm just using Garmin's data, it basically says I've been keeping pretty steady and maintaining over the last month. Now, what's interesting is when I start to go in other pieces of software, I get a different picture of what this data is telling me. Okay, so let's first go into Golden Cheetah. If you're not familiar with what Golden Cheetah is, um, Golden Cheetah is a free piece of software that it's open source. Um, it's very well respected, um, has research done on it. Um, it's very comparable to Training Peaks data analysis. You can do any so many different types of data analysis with it. Um, Golden Cheetah, I use the TRIMP score in Golden Cheetah to calculate my fitness. TRIMP is based on your heart rate. Okay, so let's take a look at what my data says in Golden Cheetah. Okay, so if you just look on the left here, we're just gonna look at these two charts right here. Um, I'm gonna ignore this one. I have a bunch of charts up here, actually. We're gonna go to some of these, but for right now, I just wanna look at these two. Okay, so the first chart that you see right here on the top here, this is my, this blue line is my training fitness. And it's my fitness since October which is when I just pulled data in for it for the analysis that I'm doing right now. Just so you can see what's happened to my general fitness since October. You can see over Christmas, I went down a little bit and then I jumped up in mid-February and then we had some coronavirus stuff. So I basically went down a little bit, but mostly stayed the same. And if you look from about May 10th until now, I've slowly increased my fitness has pretty much been increasing ever since then from about May 10th. Here is just the last 30 days from April 29th to today. So if you look at the, you know, early on in the month, my fitness level was at about a 19.3. I've slowly went up between 19 and 20. You can see the numbers like changing as I go through the graph. And currently today I'm at a 22. So over the last 30 days, my TRIMP score has went up from 19.2 to 22.6. So my TRIMP score has slowly increased over the last 30 days, several points. And if we wanna take a look at that, I can actually show those numbers right here. Um, this middle number, let me get to the last 30 days. Well, let's just look at the last 15 because that's all that's going to fit on this chart right now. So you can see that I was, this is the score that I was just showing in the chart, this middle line right here. You can see by about May 12th, I was 19.1. I've slowly went up the 19s into the 20s. Then I went up to 21 and I'm currently at 22.6. So you can see since about May 10th, this has shown that my fitness has increased very steadily. Okay, now that's a different picture than what Garmin Connect showed, right? Garmin just showed I'm pretty much maintaining. In fact, over the last week of 10 days, it showed that my fitness is probably about ready to decrease. I'm maintaining ready to decrease. Whereas Golden Cheetah is showing that I've steadily increased my fitness. Okay. So, which is right? Well, let's take a look at some other uh, some other software that does this kind of analysis just to compare. Okay, first piece of software we're gonna look at is Strava. Strava does data analysis. Um, you know, they've added a bunch of new features over the last few years. You do have to pay for Strava's data analysis, um, which is a whole other issue. We're not gonna talk about that right now, um, but you do have to pay for it. I am a 
premium subscriber, I guess, to Strava. So I get to see that. Okay, so let's take a look at what Strava is showing us. If you look at the Strava data, the Strava data is very similar to Golden Cheetah. It's again showing that I've had this increase. So it's kind of interesting when I look at Strava. Okay, so now I've got two pieces of data. I've got Strava's and I've got Golden Cheetah's. However, when I go in and look at the back end, and I notice that Strava also pretty much uses my heart rate, which is also my trim score, um, to calculate their data. So it's not too surprising that they're aligned with one another. So it's almost like it's a still fair comparison, but I got to remember like the back end calculations are very similar. Um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to look at something different. I wanted to look at my TSS. Um, and I wanted to analyze that. So I looked in, I use HRV for training if you're not familiar with it. Um, HRV for training measures your HRV, but it measures things like your load and all kinds of other VO2 max and other things like that. Um, so what I did is I analyzed my scores in HRV for training using my TSS. And lo and behold, you can see, as you can see, using my TSS scores from training peaks and analyzed in HRV for training shows that over the last month, my fitness has steadily been increasing. Okay. So then I'm like, okay, so now we have three different pieces of software who are all in agreement with one another. And now we have Garmin saying something a little different, painting a different picture. So the biggest question becomes, well, how do I feel? What did I do over the last month? Has my fitness increased? Like, do I think, like, how does my body feel? Am I in better shape than I was 30 days ago? Do I feel like I've been improving or getting worse or maintaining? Um, And I can tell you 100% I've been improving because in February and March, um, because of coronavirus, I was working out just a little bit less, especially in March. Then starting in April, it slowly started to pick up. Over the last month, towards the end of April to to where I am today, my fitness has been increasing significantly as I've been getting out there and running more and doing more exercise in general. Surfing, which I do all calculate on my watch. Surfing um, and just everything that I've been doing, lifting weights, biking. So it's all being calculated and all of these pieces of software are showing that increase that I'm also feeling and experiencing. But Garmin is not, which is kind of interesting. So I was curious as to why this wasn't happening. So of course I go in and start to do a little research on Garmin. So I send an email to FirstBeat. Now remember, FirstBeat is the one who does the calculations. So I talked to FirstBeat in a a forum and actually was able to talk to one of their moderators, one of the people in, that works for first beat about their calculations. And I said, I actually posted pictures of the three pieces of data showing how they all aligned and said, your metrics in Garmin Connect are not aligning with these other three pieces of data. And I, I believe the other three pieces of data are correct. And I kind of believe this Garmin data is not correct. The response that I got back was that they're just using different algorithms and theirs is back, first piece is backed by research. It's the correct one. I mean, I guess, I don't know what else. I just, you know, I tried to ask like, well, why is it different? They just said it was a different algorithm. That was the response. Um, So I really didn't get much out of that conversation, but I still, at least I tried and I did reach out to them to try to talk to them about this. Um, But I do find it rather interesting that, you know, Garmin is not showing the same thing that I'm getting from all these other pieces of software. So I think that there are some disadvantages there. I also, so there are some other things I want to talk about with the Garmin ecosystem that I think are, I know I love Garmin products. I use them and I'm going to continue to use them. I'm hoping they come out with a 955 with LTE soon because I'm waiting to buy it. It's like, I love their stuff, but that doesn't mean I can't criticize because there are some other disadvantages with their ecosystem when I compare it to like Golden Cheetah, Strava, Training Peaks, HRV for training, Run Analyze, whatever you're using. Um, so, and here are the big things. So first of all, my data is not matching up well with the other ones. Okay, so I think that's odd, but you know what? That could be like me and I could, maybe for you it is. So I don't wanna like just say it's not gonna match up for every person or something like that. But then let's talk about some of the other things. So like I have this Apple watch, I'm wearing my Apple watch right now. I've got a, as I said, I got a bunch of different watches from 
Garmin. I wear my Vivo Smart 4 to sleep, other stuff. But I do track all my activities with my Forerunner. Um, but here's one of the big disadvantages. If I were to track an activity with this Apple Watch and upload it to Garmin Connect, it does not count as parting my training status, which is just bonkers. Of course it should count. The problem is Garmin's data is tied Garmin's tied to first beat. First beat only allows you to use the data by the device. So like all my training status stuff is in my Forerunner and I can view it on Garmin Connect, but Garmin Connect isn't like the main hub for it. It's the watch, which is the opposite of what it should be. So that means like if I upload a workout from my Vivo Smart or my Apple Watch to Garmin, it just doesn't count as part of training status. I can't get it to count. There's nothing I can do. It's just not gonna count. Um, so there's that, which is a huge disadvantage. Whereas with Golden Cheetah or any of these other pieces of software, I can upload workouts from an Apple Watch, Vivo Smart, Forerunner, whatever. And guess what? It's all gonna count towards my training status. So Garmin's doing like the opposite there. It's just literally backwards, makes absolutely no sense. So that's one of my big like gripes with the data. So I think that that's a significant problem. Um, so those are some of the like big disadvantages that I see with the way the Garmin platform is working. I think that the data's not aligning for some reason with other software out there. And it's also too tied to the device. It needs to be tied to Garmin Connect and work no matter what I'm putting in there. If I own the highest model Forerunner Phoenix watch and can calculate uh, training status, it shouldn't matter if I used an Apple Watch one day for a workout and upload it. Um, it should be calculating it. Then there's one other disadvantage, which I already talked about. As I said in the beginning of this video, when you're in order to get training status to work, you have to run outside using GPS or bike with a power meter. Okay, well, guess what happens to me in the winter? It's freezing outside. So guess where I run? I run at the gym on a treadmill. So after a while, what starts to happen at first, my training status is still being updated. But after not running outside for like a month and a half, guess what? It just stops recognizing training status. It would literally doesn't recognize my workouts anymore. So all of a sudden, I can't use my Garmin training status at all because I'm not running outside or biking outside. It's just worthless to me. And if you're one of those people that runs inside all the time, because there are people like that, and I've done that, especially where I live. I live in the South United States, and it gets really hot in the summer, so I'll start running inside in the summer too. Um, so <laughs> the training status doesn't work, so I have no choice but to. That's why I've turned to these other pieces of software to begin with, because Garmin's wasn't working for me. Um, so there are some significant issues with the way Garmin does this. So if you were going to go out and buy a watch, I highly recommend Garmin for working out, but if you're buying it only for this training status, I think you do not do that. Do not like, like just buy the lower version that doesn't have it because you don't need it. It does, it literally does nothing. Just use another piece of software. Um, I think they're better. So I think there are just a lot of options out there. I'm really not a fan of Garmin's training status. I so, so, so wish that they watch this video and actually fix it and make it so that it does what it's supposed to do because it would be awesome. I would love to just be using Garmin Connect and not all this other stuff. Um, so please fix it, Garmin. Um, and for those of you watching, that's my review. That's what I have to say about it. Um, you know, do this comparison for yourself, those of you that have these other watches, and see what happens. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.